All right, welcome to your first podcast here. We're going to start with a kind of a broad topic, ecosystems. Uh, there is some reference material that exists in Chapter 54. It's okay if you're not there yet. Um, today's really goal is just to kind of give you a general overview of some of the things we're going to talk about in ecology. So the background here that you're looking at, this is one of my most favorite uh, ecosystems that exists, a coral reef ecosystem. I just love the colors and the unique species that live there. So anytime I travel, I always try to find a new aquarium or something like that to go to. Okay, so let's look at a way of organizing some of the information um, in ecology. So we're going to start um, at the most simplest level um, with an organism. Now you know that we can go down and, and categorize these in organ systems and organs and tissues and cells and those sorts of things. And we'll eventually get there. But let's, let's for our starting point, let's just start with an organism. If you have many organisms, we call that a population. If you have several populations, we call that a community. And if you have several communities, we call that a ecosystem. And if you have several ecosystems, we call that a biosphere. So yes, it is just that simple. And we're going to look at ecosystems, communities, and populations. Those are kind of the three that we're going to focus in on. So just as, a, as an information to you to look forward to. Also, as we look at those three systems, we want to be able to answer these questions. Now, some of these questions we may answer today. Um, other questions may come about in class, but you may want to pause everything right now. Just write these down in your notes, because as you study for the test, these are the things you probably should focus on. So hit play when you're ready to come back. All right, so we're going to begin with an ecosystem. And in an ecosystem, we look at everything that is in that ecosystem that's living. So organisms, populations, communities, all those things. Plus, we bring in the non-living side of things. And the two kind of non-living things that we are worried about is energy. And yes, there's kind of some physics that, go in, that goes into here. And matter. So yeah, there's a little bit of chemistry that goes into here too. Don't get scared yet. Um, because we keep it on a very strict biology level with those two things. All right, so we're going to worry about how do ecosystems capture their energy, how do they transfer this energy, and then how do they cycle those nutrients. So I want to give you my other picture to look at here. So we're going to start with the sun. And the sun is our ultimate source of energy. And you can always use that on a, an essay question or multiple choice question. If it talks about energy, where does energy start? I hope you pick the sun. Now, the phrase that I like to tell you about this constant input of energy is I want you to think of that energy flows through an ecosystem. All right. So the Ohio River flows from Pennsylvania and eventually drains into the Mississippi. It doesn't go back up to Pennsylvania and circle back around again. It's a flow. Okay, Think of it almost, sometimes I call it, it's a linear movement. Now the opposite of that is how our nutrients work and our nutrient cycle. So I've got that little graphic of the green arrow cycling around. Nutrients can be reused. Energy cannot. You could transfer the energy and change its form, but you can't reuse the energy. So that's just kind of my little spiel on the two of those. Now I want to focus in on the nutrient cycle because the flowing of energy, that really gets into our photosynthesis stuff and that's a little bit later. So let's look at this nutrient cycle. If I could break down an, um, a nutrient cycle, make it as simple as I could, there's a couple things you got to look at. Where does the nutrient exist in the non-living world? And we call that the abiotic reservoir. How does it enter the food chain? How does it get recycled? And so we look at it entering the food chain, maybe through a producer. How does it get recycled? And then how does it return back to the non-living part? So this is kind of a, this, the simple picture that I could give you. So let's jump right in and look at one of our nutrient cycles. Let's look at carbon. So I want to highlight for you, we're going to focus in on carbon that's in the atmosphere. Now, yes, carbon can be dissolved in the ocean too. But to simplify things, just focus on it being in the atmosphere. How it enters the food chain is going to be through photosynthesis, through all of our plant life. 
In the same way, remember, photosynthesis can happen in the water, too, so it can enter um, plant life through there. And then how does it get recycled back? I want you to look at respiration as being that main concept. Now I'm going to throw in combustion too here uh, because we're going to talk about the combustion issue with um, humans and an impact that humans have on the environment. So let's look at the four major things we've got to remember. Your abiotic reservoir, how it enters the food chain, how it gets recycled, and how it returns to the abiotic world. Go ahead and hit pause and copy these things down. When you're ready, hit play again. All right, so before we go on to the next slide, I just want to focus. It's okay if you don't know about carbon fixation in the Calvin cycle. You will by the time we have the AP tests, and you will here in the next couple units when we talk about photosynthesis. But I wanted to introduce that to you today. All right, so nitrogen. Um, again, I kind of like to highlight a couple of these. Check this out. Here's a similarity with the carbon. It does exist in the atmosphere. What's interesting here, though, is bacteria play a huge role in getting this into the food chain. Uh, because nitrogen will take however this, um, I'm sorry, bacteria will take however this nitrogen is in the atmosphere and make it into a usable form for plants. And you can see these bacteria, they have the, those are those little nodules that exist on these roots. It's actually a symbiotic relationship that that bacteria has with that plant. Plankton also have um, a relationship with bacteria that allow them to take this nitrogen into a form that they can use. So there's your aquatic connection. And from there, it moves into your um, you know, producers, consumers. And then how does it get recycled back? Well, again, here's bacteria playing a role. They can take it into the form of either urine or manure or even decaying animals or plants and take it into a form that's usable by plants again. So how do we get it then back into the reservoir? You guessed it, bacteria play a role in releasing nitrogen back into the atmosphere. Okay, so let's get these four things down. You've got nitrogen that exists in the atmosphere for your reservoir, enters the food chain um, either by soil bacteria or aquatic bacteria. Those same bacteria play a role in recycling it. And bacteria, again, play a role in returning it to the abiotic world. So the big theme here is bacteria. Hit pause as you copy this down. When you're ready, hit play, and we'll get the phosphor cycle done. All right, now this is the cycle that gets a little unusual because we don't have an existing in the atmosphere. All our phosphorus at some point is either locked up in rocks and minerals. And so what has to happen is those rocks and minerals are soluble and can either dissolve the phosphate that can go directly into soil or into solution into our lakes. But we've got a similarity here because bacteria have to be able to take that and make it into a form that's usable for plants to use. Some um, soluble uh, phosphorus, some plants will just directly take up, but we do have that bacteria connection here again. All right, so let's get our four things down. Your abiotic reservoir is in rocks and minerals enters the food chain um, by erosion taken up by the plants, gets recycled by bacteria and fungi. Um, that might be able to go back into a plant form then. And then it's returned to the abiotic world. I think this is interesting um, because they forget about the Great Lakes. Um, yes, uh, if you live in most places of the United States, your uh, bodies of water drain to the ocean. However, where we are, the Tinker's Creek watershed eventually drains into Lake Erie. So we lose any of our excess phosphorus there. Um, and sometimes you'll hear in the news about algae blooms. Well, that's because of that excess phosphorus. And phosphorus is one of the components that exists in some of the lawn fertilizers. Um, can also exist in high amounts of manure. So if farmers or even land and homeowners apply fertilizers at too high of a rate, excess gets washed off, and then it causes the problems in the Great Lakes. 
All right, so lastly, I know you've probably seen this since fifth grade. I just want to go over a brief water cycle picture for you. We're going to start with where your reservoirs are, anything that's in surface or atmospheric um, places. I also classify groundwater in this place. If you have a well on your uh, property, that's where you get your water from is groundwater. This goes into um, the food chain by precipitation or plants take this in. Precipitation kind of sounds a little funny. I mean, I don't think that you're out there eating snow in the wintertime. You could be. Um, but, you know, think about how we drink water and how animals drink water. Um, that comes from ultimately precipitation. Um, how it is recycled is through transpiration. We'll talk a little bit about evaporation also with those. Maybe even some runoff. And then how it gets returned, I'm sorry, is back through evaporation or runoff. So it's okay if you're kind of um, unfamiliar with the idea of transpiration. We do a whole lab of trans transpiration with plants. It's actually a pretty cool process to look at how just a simple water molecule can move from roots all the way through the leaves. So it's okay or if you want to star that for something later. All right, well, that's it for your uh, podcast today. Make sure if you have any questions, you take a second to write those down, and I will see you in class.